Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video I'm going to show you how I built uh, some router bit stands. Uh, I've looked around on the web and on YouTube and I've seen a lot of really good ideas but they didn't quite fit my needs in particular. But I took a combination of these ideas and came up with something on my own and this is going to be my first generation I suppose. As time goes on I may improve upon this uh, but for now uh, this seems to work pretty good for me. What I did is took some of the white um, cutting board that you can buy at Walmart. I think I bought this big piece. Uh, it's like 15 by 24 or something like that for about 12 bucks. You know that's a pretty good deal compared to what you spend for that kind of stuff elsewhere uh, especially through woodworking supplies and came up with making something along this line for storing my um, router bits and stuff and what it is is cutting out this cutting board here in lengths I did them at 15 inches the width of the board and it's 3 eighths of an inch thick I got half inch plywood on the bottom and the shortest bit shafts that I have was uh, like an inch. So I did my spacing with these spacers here. I tried to find some nylon spacers to use, uh, but they're quite expensive or I couldn't find the right thing. So I came up with the idea of using some 7 16 dowels and drilling a hole through it, using some number 8 screws uh, to hold it all together. And this all works pretty good. Uh, holds the bits really well. Oh, you can see that and uh, keeps them from getting rusty or crappy. Previously I had used, um, I'll put a little clip up of it, a, some of this green styrofoam insulation from Home Depot, but that left some, you know, rough crap on the shafts of my bits. I had tried some other kind of like uh, wood that was like, I think a particle board or something, it was kind of some kind of leftover stuff, maybe it was leftover melamine and use that for making router bit holders too, but then those seem to uh, seep the moisture out of the air and I was getting rust on my bits. So going with this plastic cutting board material, I've heard of that being recommended many times because then your bits are not going to get rusty. On this bottom wood surface here, probably a good idea to either paint that with like a uh, enamel paint or maybe a varnish or something to kind of protect that surface. This being a piece of plywood, it's not going to soak up the moisture from the air as much as like a particle board or maybe even MDF wood. So, this other board here um, has some bigger stuff on it. Also, I did some special cutting to make a cutout for this to fit into. And I did that on my scroll saw. Okay, this is uh, what I had used most recently. I went to the styrofoam here, which was better, but still I was getting some stuff sticking on the shanks. Uh, this is just made out of some of that green styrofoam board from like Home Depot. Uh, it comes, I think, uh, maybe three quarter inch thick or something. So, this is what I'm replacing with these uh, new ones. That's another step in my evolution of trying to find a good cure for my oddball rudder bits. Okay, so this is a, um, what do you call this, plastic cutting board I picked up at Walmart for like $12. Um, it was pretty large, I think 15 by 24 inches or something like that. And what I'm doing is uh, cutting it up to... Um, get the strips out of it that I need for making the uh, bit holders. What I did on this one was I cut it here um, because I wanted a square edge and then I found out that actually I could have just uh, cut it off like this this edge just where the uh, curve ends at and that way, you know, I'm not losing 
good inch or so here that I would otherwise lose. Because once I you know, turn this over to use as a surface, I've got these rounded edges here which can interfere with the uh, screw mounts that I'm going to put in. Then what I'm doing is I'm cutting these into strips that are 2 inches wide and the length of this board here is 15 inches. Okay, so here I'm going to cut this cutting board. Part of it I've already cut off as I've indicated before so I can score off the edges. But I set it so that the gullet of the teeth barely above or below the cutting surface I'm going to cut. And then I'm going to cut the thickness of the width of this board to two inches. Now I use this folding ruler because it's more accurate than a tape measure is. Okay, now I take a half inch board. I guess I'm going to have to raise my teeth a little bit here on my table saw. This is going to be the bottom part setup that I'm using for the router bit storage. I'm going to cut this to the same width as the other one. Now I have slid my fence over. Maybe you can't see it in this video here, but I've butted these pieces up to the fence here so I have these straight. And then I'm going to mark the edge here for the length of this piece. This line here. I will then use my miter gauge to trim this off to length. Now I have a perfect uh, match to these two boards here as far as the width and the length so I can start forming the shelf space between there which I'm going to do with dowels between here, six dowels to support this up here. Okay so in working with this I want to put this together so I can uh, drill holes in here and whatever things to um, put the router bits in and any other pieces I want to do. And what I've measured is that the thickness of this board is like three-eighths of an inch thick. The shortest um, shaft of my shortest router bit is like one inch in length, uh, even at a quarter inch uh, shaft. So I decided to make some uh, cut some dowels out that I'm going to use as spacers. I've been using a 7 16th inch dowel and I'm going to cut them to 5 8 of an inch in length. Actually what I'm going to do first is uh, take about a 3 inch length of this and use a centering jig on my uh, drill press to drill a hole through the dowels and the hole I'm going to drill is 11 64ths. Drill it for as long as it can, which is almost 3 inches. And I'll use this jig on my drill press to hold it straight in the center. Then I go to the bandsaw and then cut them off in pieces. Then what it's going to look like when I get done with it all is this. Uh, this is a finished piece. And I've got six dowels in here. Four at the ends, two in the centers here. And the screws that I'm using for those are number eights by one and a half inch flat heads. And what I did is shaped out for the heads here so they'll sit flush on that. Then, uh, once I got that to that size, I take the flat piece that I've cut here over to the drill press and I cut out the holes, you know, I lay out my bits uh, to determine where I want my holes at and so forth. Draw out the holes at the drill press. For the shape of this, uh, this is for lock miter setup, so it's an oddball shape, it's not a round thing. I traced out the shape of this 
around the piece there and then I drilled a hole in the middle of it. I went to the scroll saw to cut out the shape for this here for this to fit in on the scroll saw. The scroll saw is the one where it's a table that moves up and down like a sewing machine. Um, much easier to control and everything else. You can do this perhaps with a jigsaw but that would be kind of a, a tricky situation to try and get a good cut in there with that. So I will take this 7 16 dowel, mark it to 3 inches here, and I will go over to the bandsaw and cut that length. Okay, so here at my bandsaw I've got this set up with the dowel with my marking. Line that up with the blade for my cut. It doesn't have to be real precise because uh, it's not going to drill exactly through the entire part anyway. And the measurements don't come out exactly given that I'm doing 5 8 long spacers out of this. Okay, so that um, gives me another piece. I'm going to take over to the drill press. I'll mark the end of this. I'll mark the end of this to uh, Give me a center. Uh, but I'll get this uh, straightened it up so it's more accurate. Okay, so I found my center, and what I do is uh, use a scribe here to dimple that. That'll be a guide for the drill bit. Uh, using a brad point drill bit helps me to stay on center there. And here I've got this uh, chucked up in a drill bit. I've got this, uh, it's this holder for round objects from Rockler that clamps together and holds round objects uh, straight on my table for me. Got this drill bit about center there. These holes uh, never do seem to come out perfectly center all the time, but I try to get it close. Drill down and clean it out a little bit. Drill and clean. This has slipped off center already. As you can see, that's kind of off center there. Uh, but it'll still serve the purpose. It's not like it's got a whole, a whole lot of strength in there. The other end, of course, didn't go all the way through because the bit's not quite long enough to do that, even though I did chuck it out a bit. So now I'm back to the bandsaw, put my piece in here, and I'll cut it to that length on the pencil mark. After I get the first one off, I'm going to use that as a um, measuring gauge for measuring all the other cuts I want to make. Okay, so that gave me uh, four spacers here. And I need to do is just make another length and drill it and uh, get the other two I need so I'll have a total of six. Next step I would do is to use the spacers here to you know mark the holes here that I want to make on the four corners, the two center ones, and the other two end ones here. Then, after I've got all six of them, I just got the four here for right now for this purpose. Uh, kind of sand them up and so forth. Actually, this board, pick a good side of the board here. I want to sand it and finish it. Then the other two would go in the middle here. And after I've laid out where I want to put my router bits and the holes where I need to drill the holes for the shafts, then I come over and attach this after I've got those holes drilled and then run the number eight by inch and a half screws through this. Sometimes it may protrude through the bottom a little bit, just the very tip of the screw, but uh, just a couple strokes with a flat file seem to eliminate that problem. Then once you're done you have a complete project like this. I've made a couple of these. Uh, this is my third piece that I'm making now. 
This is for all the oddball, you know, router pieces, uh, router bits, and other kinds of paraphernalia for doing the routing that I have. That doesn't fit into other, you know, cabinets. Let me show you the other one. This one I did for a lot of smaller bits that I've got, and also to hold, you know, I put some wooden dowels in that hold uh, the cowlets and stuff for my router and some other you know accessory pieces including the starter pan so this is my solution that I found for making router bit holders for all the oddball router bits that I've got well I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got something out of it if you did uh, please give me a like if you like to see more things as I come out with them in the future I've got a few more planned I don't do this uh, to make money off the advertising. I'm just trying to share some of the tips and tricks and things that I've learned along the way and figured out some of them on my own. But YouTube uh, here is a great resource for learning and getting a lot of things. I call it YouTube University because you can learn so much here. Anyways, thank you. Please subscribe.